All right, we're welcome to the stage Stanford head coach Jared Haas and student athletes Spencer Jones and Harrison Ingram. And coach, we'll give you a few moments for some opening remarks and then we'll turn it over to questions. All right, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, certainly excited to be here. Um, excited about the season last year. Uh, was a year I think we can build off of. Uh, culturally, I think we really did some nice things. I think on the court, we did some nice things. We were pretty young last year. And having said all that, I think it builds into this year. Uh, generally, where you're older, um, these two guys next to me here coming back is going to be a, a big deal for us. Uh, we have a extremely difficult schedule, um, but also an, an opportunity to uh, make some noise in the, in the non-conference schedule. Um, with these guys here, as you'll, as you'll see, and we probably already know, they're really the definition of scholar-athletes. I'm proud of everything we're doing and proud of what they're doing. Um, and then on the court, hopefully we can build on that as well and have a successful year. Thanks, Coach. We'll go to questions now. Please raise your hand. And we have mic runners around the room, and we will get you a microphone to ask your question. We'll go to Kevin Dana on the front right. Kevin Dana, Pac-12 Networks, for, for both you, Coach, and, and uh, Spencer and Harrison. Uh, how, how confident are you that, that this year, with everyone you have returning and, and the stuff you were able to build off last year, that this is an NCAA tournament caliber team? You guys are picked to finish fifth, so you figure to be right in that race. Yeah, I mean, I would say our, our confidence level is that we're, we're building something every day in practice, and I know – uh, that's a little bit of cliche, but uh, while we do have big dreams and goals, including the NCAA tournament, our focus really is on getting in and out of every day, making sure we're making the improvements. I do think there's a lot of optimism within the program and within the team, but also an understanding we still have a ton of work to do. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very confident. Um, you know, in my four, this is going to be my fourth year. So in my four years, um, you know, this is the first team that's kind of like an older team. So it's, you know, being with guys I've been through, building, have built chemistry with, and guys that have like endured a long season, know, know what the grit and all the effort that it takes. Now, I'm, I'm very confident that, we, you know, we have the talent and now we have, now we have the experience. It's, it's, yeah, it's time. To add on to what they said, it's in the locker room. The spirits are high. I mean, these last few preseason practices, we didn't know who's starting, who's playing, competitive. I mean, we're going to have a very, very deep team, and I, we want all the expectations to make the March Madness. We'll go to Steve Croner on the left. Yeah, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. First for Harrison and then Spencer and Coach, if you could give your, your reactions to it. Harrison, what made you decide to, I know because you went into the, looking into the, the draft and then came back to Stanford. What was the reasoning for it? And then afterwards, Spencer and, and Coach, when you heard Harrison was coming back, what was your reaction? Definitely just my conversation with Coach Haas and just seeing the bigger picture. I mean, it's always been, my dream is the NBA, but another dream is making March Madness. I feel like we have a great chance to do it this year, and I trust Coach, trust Spencer, trust my teammates to get it done. Yeah, I was certainly ecstatic coming back. Um, I feel like our play styles definitely feed off each other well, him being an excellent passer and playmaker and me being a, being a pretty good shooter. So, um, no, I, I know we, we have... Felt like we had uh, some unfinished business um, ending, ending the year, um, definitely knowing we could do better, and now we have the chance to do it. No, I, I agree. We were certainly thrilled, but uh, and I do want to really give Harrison credit. Is th the way he handled the process was really impressive, and uh, obviously we expect that from him. But uh, he handled it the right way. Communication was awesome throughout, and. Uh, uh, hopefully he felt the same way from our side as try and gather as much information, but no question about it. We're thrilled he came back and, and excited to, for what we can do this year. We'll go to Matt. Matt Prem, 24-7 Sports. Coach, just you've been here for a while. Your, what's your impressions when you look across the league of just where this league is at going into the year? Yeah, I think the league is uh, really on an uptick right now. Uh, obviously, there were some good things last year, some some really uh, high-level teams, especially at the top. I think there will be um, great balance in the league. I think there's going to be talent from top to bottom. I think uh, it's a nice mixture of returning players, uh, many all-league type guys, and uh, transfers into the league. So I think between the coaching, the overall talent, I think it has a chance to be a league that uh, can do some nice things. We're going to go to Ben Parker in the back left. Ben Parker, CardinalSportsSports.com. Uh, just, I want to get you know both reaction from coaches as well as players just on 
Michael Jones and what he's brought to the program so far as a graduate transfer and just what his experience, and he's, he's been in the tournament before, just what his experience um, and guard play is going to mean to the team this year. Yeah, no, that's one thing he's absolutely brought, as you said, is his experience, and he's honestly been a been a perfect fit. He's the kind of kind of guy, you know. After you're playing four years, you you know you know what you can do, you know where you'll fit in, and he does it seamlessly. He knows where to be, always in the right spots, and then yeah, he, he provides that little um, extra information about you know how how you get to the tournament, what it takes, you know what his team did that we aren't necessarily doing, or what we do that his team didn't do and just it just helps from a leadership perspective and a culture building perspective he's been great definitely I mean even the little things on defense knowing when he knows how to switch this kind of nonverbal stuff he does on offense defense always cutting in the right place and then, and then adding him Spencer Brandon Angel I can go down the list of just a top shooters in my opinion the best shooters I've seen in the college basketball on one team is gonna be amazing now we're uh, one of the greatest days I've had since I've been the coach at Stanford was in the middle of the summer. I went in and about half the guys before practice looked like they needed to shave. And I was really excited because since I've been there, we've been so young that nobody really had to do that. So with Michael, we have somebody that's a little bit more experienced, a little bit older. And, um, you know, the reality is there's there's a difference. There's a big difference between a 19 year old and a 21 year old, 22, 23 year old. So not only is there, he a great player, uh, but he has that experience as well. Uh, again, joined with these guys who are a little bit more mature, which I think is uh, providing some excitement. Go to Shereen on the front right. Shereen Ryan in the front rows. You said student athletes. I'm always interested to find out what are you guys studying and what um, what's your major and what are you finding out through your major that helps you uh, on your team and in the on the court. So for me at Stanford, we don't major until junior year. I'm still a sophomore, so I don't quite know yet. I'll probably take in most economic classes and a few psych classes. I'm not quite sure. I'm doing yet, but just knowing that there's a balance on and off the court. That I went to a pretty prestigious high school for academics, and I mean that's important to me and my family. And just knowing that I get that at Stanford is amazing. Uh, my major is management science and engineering. It's kind of just like the study of the study and analysis of uh, management systems. That's actually been pretty helpful. Uh, currently, I'm in a class called leadership and action. It's kind of just how to be how to be a better corporate leader. But all those all those um, tendencies, all those attributes, really really help me to you know be a better leader on this court. If you don't mind, I'll add to that too. I mean, I'm as a coach, extremely proud uh, of the the team that we have. Uh, the team GPA since I've, I've been there continues to rise and it's been hovering about a 3.5. The diversity of majors, we have everything from a computer science major to a mathematics to econ, um, but it's completely diversified across the across the university. But we do believe in the scholar athlete. Uh, we think we've done a great job recruiting uh, to what fits Stanford and these two are fabulous examples, but the cool part is we have a locker room full of that as well. We'll go back to Kevin Dana on the right. Hey, Coach, you, you bring in uh, some, uh, you've always done a good job recruiting at Stanford. You bring in some more high level guys. What are you expecting from, from guys uh, like uh, Ryan, Jalen, uh, and, and Benny this year? Yeah, all three uh, freshmen are coming in uh, and will provide depth, uh, number one. And all of them have um, some strengths that I think can can add add value right away uh, from, you know, Jalen, his athleticism and defensively, I think could be a really uh, high level contributor right away. Uh, Ryan Agarwal shoots it uh, really at a high, high level as well. Um, you know, Benny can shoot it and provide leadership from the point guard spot, um, but adds depth. And, you know, one thing that we do have this year, we keep talking about being a little bit older. And uh, those guys, I think, are going to have great opportunities, but also fit into uh, kind of the greater good of what we have going on. We'll go back to Steve Croner on the left. Yeah, Coach, not telling any tales out of school. For the past couple of years, you guys have started the season pretty darn well and haven't ended it quite so well. Why will this season be different in that regard? Well, hopefully we, uh, I, I, I think being healthy overall will be important. I think I do a good job and I hope these guys would agree of keeping a pulse on their bodies and making sure we're, we're feeling good and healthy down the stretch. I would argue we were playing our best basketball at the end of last season. We uh, beat Arizona State. Actually, we played at Arizona, at Arizona State in two hard fought games and then um, uh, beat Arizona State in the, in the tournament, took Arizona down to the wire. So I think we were playing our best basketball. Before that, I want to say we had 15 games in 40 days, uh, which was a, uh, a brutal, brutal schedule um, with a team that was generally young. 
but I do have confidence that we're going to be able to um, continue to um, build and grow down the stretch. Uh, in the last couple of years, you know, also that uh, we tend to start uh, at home, which means you end the season with four of six or five of seven games on the road, uh, which does, you know, obviously impact things as well. But big picture, I do think there's a, a real belief in what we're doing and an understanding of making sure that to be able to play our best basketball towards the end of the year, we need the guys feeling healthy uh, and we need to manage that as coaches and understand and listen to the players. Go back to Ben Parker in the back left. Question for Jared. Um, just kind of looking at your schedule, it really does feel like it's a schedule that is designed, particularly the non-conference portion, to kind of boost your net and boost your NCAA tournament rating, tough schedule. Just kind of looking at it, is that some, would you agree with that, that that kind of conscientiously you guys were trying to create a schedule to help improve your tournament chances? Yeah, the reality is uh, I had a friend in the business call and say, what the heck are we doing? Uh, and the reality is we do think we have a team that is capable and ready. We've we put together a schedule that is uh, extremely challenging. Our guys understand that and understand the work that's going to be required. Um, and we're looking at it holistically as well. But we're trying to challenge ourselves as much as possible uh, and do it in a way that we think we can can achieve some success throughout. But it's uh, it was very intentional about how we put the schedule together. Any additional questions? We'll go to Coach Carlesimo. PJ Carlesimo, Pac-12 Network. Jared, a, a nostalgia question first and then a, a legit question. How much do you miss uh, Kaiser Permanente? <laughs> so much so we're going to go play a game there in December. So uh, we, uh, it, it, we actually uh, have taken the team down to practice this year already. And uh, the time in Santa Cruz, um, and, and Spencer, we actually had this conversation. It's it's powerful in a lot of ways. We went through so many emotions there, from the highs of the high to the lows of the low. And uh, you know, the COVID experience for everyone was challenging, um, but also very rewarding for us. Um, but we're going to go back there and again, see, give it a go again. I was struck by your comments after the inner squad. Um, you said you had willing passers and, and willing cutters, and and I'd love Spencer to talk about that also. But uh, very much so in relation to your last couple teams or you just you, these guys are taking it to another level is this deep yeah it's not a comparison statement it's it's just kind of a, a statement about this team i do think it starts uh, in a lot of ways with harrison the ball is in his hands a lot and he is a extremely willing passer and i also think they've mentioned to it a little bit already is that we have very capable shooters around and i think the guys are seeing the more we share the basketball uh, and move the basketball and have proper cutting and spacing uh, that's how we can be really good offensively. And they've seen it some in practice that we have a defensive segment and, you know, we're really playing hard and playing well. And offensively, when we do have the cutting and passing, uh, good things tend to happen on the offensive end. Yeah, no, I definitely second that. Part of it is just, yeah, having all those shooters, um, you really don't care who gets the shot because all you're looking for is the best possible shot to get with that many shooters because, you know, if anybody takes it, we all got, you know, 37%, 40% guys all out on the perimeter. So you're just trying to look for the best shot possible. That's, 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 that's how I see it. Any additional questions? We'll go to Kevin Dana for the last one. Uh, this question is for both uh, Spencer and Harrison. Uh, what have you seen from Issa and Maxime? They, they had some really impressive moments their freshman year. How have you seen them improve as they get ready for their sophomore seasons? For for East, it was you know just handling the the pressure and the physicality of you know being a college point guard. You know it's definitely definitely testing, especially for a freshman. You get a bunch of guys who are really really going to try to get up in your grill, and he's he's definitely learning learned from that. Definitely handling it a lot better and. Uh, Similar to Maxime with the physicality, you know, is a, is a European big, so you know they like a little little more style. Uh, but James, James is really teaching him, you know, how to just be a brutal force in the paint. And you know, on top of on top of his touch and skill that he already has, it, it can be dangerous. When it can be dangerous. Um, with them being in my class, both sophomores, I'm really close with them. So from a different perspective, I've seen them kind of mature in their mentality, just getting to the gym more and more careful about their body, stretching and stuff before. And then for Issa, as Spencer said, just handling pressure better and being more of like a vocal leader and saying everybody together. And then for Maxime, he's one of the most talented bigs I've ever seen. His is just having a motor and going as hard as you can see, like he says about James Keith, he goes as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Diving on the floor every practice, I mean, 
elbowing people, throwing people around, just this Maxine kind of getting that nastiness to him. 